Hello, Internet friends. It's been a minute. It's so good to virtually see many of you. Uh, uh, not you, Seth. No, that's all right. Um, wow. Oh, wow. 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 First I love you, Seth. He's back in the chair for two seconds, and he's already calling people out. <laughs> and, and also, when we did the audio check, <laughs> he's nowhere near the hello, I, internet I, friends. I mean, in fairness, we should have had him check with that. We all know. We all knew it. I knew it. I was, that's I why I did. I, I sang for the audio check. It should have been there. Uh, hello, internet friends. It's good to see you virtually, uh, and to be back in this much different studio. For for one thing, like you're all used to this now with the cool water behind you and stuff, but uh, it's all new to me. Again, let's stop calling Seth out with all this uh, water talking. <laughs> oh man, he's gonna revoke the bits he just gave, and like, and we will deserve it. Yeah, yeah. canceled his Patreon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Give me all the cards back. We, I am lucky enough to be at this table with four awesome players, uh, and we are together going to be playing Bully Pulpit's new game. Is that in the, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, not upside down, for once. Uh, Desperation. <laughs> Desperation is a, uh, a survival horror game uh, of people trying to endure horrible things. We are going to be playing. There are two scenarios the game comes with. The game is available today. It's just out today from Bully Pulpit Games. First of all, it comes in an awesome little package. Uh, the whole game is a deck of cards. So it comes with two decks of cards, two different games. We are going to be playing the Isabel. Pay no attention to the fact that on the thing the ship is sinking. That is not in any way uh, uh, telling you what's going to happen. So this is the Isabel is a schooner, a codfish schooner that is in uh, the upper Pacific Ocean, in uh, uh, the Alaskan Islands, fishing. Uh, and uh, we're going to learn a surprising amount about codfishing in these cards. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was tough business and it was dangerous business. Uh, and so we're going to see how these folks can make it through this. The game is a pretty short one. We will probably be playing for two hours or so. Um, we will go through, there are three small sub-decks of cards here that we're gonna shuffle up, and each turn, someone's gonna draw a card, they're gonna read the card to themselves, and then they're going to decide which of the various characters that we have laid out either takes the action on the card or has what the consequence on the card happen to them. Mm. And, because this is Quests and Chaos, we're going to let you play along. If you give us a thousand bits, you get to decide who de the next person to die. Now, to be clear, <laughs> the next person to die is not going to be one of the people at this table. Uh, the, <laughs> we are not playing specific characters in this game. The way to think about this game is that we, the five of us here at the table, are the writer's room for this story. And so we're telling a bunch of different stories. Oh, there was the reset. I just saw it. There. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> he's, he's, he's still getting used to it. Yeah, I, it's all new to me. Wall. It's all new to me. Uh, the um, one of the neat things about this game is that it has built-in content warnings. And the way that works is that the game gives you a little index that says if you are if you if someone at your table has issues with things happening to animals, remove these cards. If someone at your table has issues with child, some things happening to children, remove these cards, so on, so forth. And so it automatically allows you to calibrate and uh, 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 tim temper the story to the people at your table, which is, nice. I think, a really clever way to have a fast session zero. Kind so, of. vegans who don't like snakes, what cards do we need to remove? Uh, I, I don't think any <laughs> of those will come up in here. Oh, wait, mental a illness. Pedant, you take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so, um, we are going to have a little bit of setup here, and I'm just going to do this on camera because uh, it's how the game is played. So, we are going to set aside our four lifeboats, which I'm sure will not come into play. Definitely not, not going to need those. <laughs> we're going to set about. We're going to set aside this card called the beach, 
And we're going to set aside this card called the Barra Barra, which is... Is that anything we could put out here to see? Uh, yeah, or is sure. that we can We can put these uh, here. They're not, this, they're, well, are I'm, they not relevant? Yeah, they're not relevant yet. Okay. We're, okay. we're, we're putting them to the side. Okay. Um, we will show you cards, we promise. So we have three decks of cards here, and we're going to remove certain cards from each one. We are going to remove two cards from the whole gale. So I'll just do that one. And then after we do setups, we'll do some. We'll so we'll do some. Give that bits. a shuffle for me. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's the back of the whole gale. Oh, oh that way. There we go. Uh, these cards are being removed from the game. So this also is replayability. It allows you to uh, randomize every session you play. Sure. So that some different things will happen every time you play. That's we are going to remove two cards from in boats. Again, pay no attention to the title. I mean, we start in a boat, so clearly things happen in boats. I'm in a boat. Give those a shuffle for me. And we are going to remove four cards from the pile just prosaically marked Hell. Huh. Oh, my favorite deck. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite season. <laughs> my favorite season. <laughs> Hell is a season in Texas. <laughs> I believe it. But we're uh, in Alaska, so. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> you so also have a season called Hell. It's just Dante's yeah. version where it gets really cold. Good news. <laughs> Hell has frozen over. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now we have a little deck here. So we're going to put the Hell deck, we're going to split in two. And we have this card, Salvation. Hmm. This will mark the end of the game. Oh. This will mark our rescue. I am shuffling this into this second hell deck. Ah. Okay. So the game doesn't end until we're everyone's dead or we find the salvation That's right. Card. I see. And I'm putting the first hell deck on top Ooh. of it. And then... <laughs> we're going to die. <laughs> well, we're going to kill some characters off. <laughs> yes. Well, you know. Okay. I don't know. Sure. If somebody kills off our favorite character, someone at the table might die. <laughs> Who knows? That reminds me of my favorite line from Caddyshack. We, we, we don't but, have enough time to really get attached to them. Is it movie talk time? But sir, <laughs> if we kill all the golfers, who is going to play the course? All right, a whole gale, <laughs> then abandoned ship, then in boats, and then landfall, and then hell. How much of this? Jeez. Uh, uh, we're gonna, black so we're gonna have like, space. Are we gonna? We're take gonna have out? ten locations. I think I'm gonna have to adjust. Let's the camera. put out the I was locations say, do we here. Know our Actually, to start with, we are gonna have four locations. We have the boat deck, we have the cabins, we have the four deck, and we have the bow. Anyone had 715? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking to get the time. Is that still a thing? Yes. Oh. It's still a thing. <laughs> Not bad. I just thought you completely blacked out Ezra's camera when I said Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's With what a I black did. shirt. Yeah. And now. <laughs> I'm being censored. <laughs> <laughs> you say as you're sitting on your bully pulpit. That's right. Uh, oh, was I supposed to announce it? No, good. Okay. Uh, you should have seen announcements before this. It was great, I'm sure. Uh, but I do want to thank our patrons, Twitch subs, and you subs. How, how like, you couldn't write out subscriptions? <laughs> our Twitch subscribers and our YouTube watchers and our YouTube subscribers as well. Thanks to all of you. It's the start of the month. Our tavern upkeep is already 49%. We're like starting on second base, yes. which is a pretty good date. You have you have been playing way too much baseball yes. lately. And uh, I would say if you advance two slides, you will have some bits that have come in. Whoa! People, We're so high tech. People want to kill us, apparently, or people that we are. Uh, so let's see. We we do have some friends of the show that we want to shout out. Our friends at Nord Games, they make awesome content for Five E that allows you to play the dragon game without giving wizards money, which is awesome. And we are brought to you by the deck of ins brought to you by the deck of inspiration, <laughs> which you can pick up for yourself at shop.questsandchaos.com. You sound like a panhandle auto <laughs> salesman. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah, came yeah, to Alaska yeah. for the gold, and then there wasn't any, which is why we're Big now fishing stole my for canoe. <laughs> We have, see now, we, we, we set the choose who dies at a thousand and people are giving 500 bits. They, they, they sent it before, before we announced. All right. Well, you know, well, you got, so Duke Fleeg, NGC457, and Games of Griff, you all get together. You get to pick, you get to vote, the three of you, 
and decide the first death when it becomes Ooh, time for it. There we go. And okay. Your grace, I will turn you into a newt. <laughs> You know, wow. you don't have to. Don't go to, tempt him with a good time. <laughs> you don't have to go to shop.questandchaos.com. You can go to Games of Antioch, or there's th there's four of them. Uh, uh, games of Carthage, King, King Kong games, King Kong games. Uh, Dublin, in Games Dublin. of Troy. It's it not Games of Dublin, Kong? but it is a ga Dublin game store. Yeah. I don't know what it's called. We'll the make games sure. of, we, I, if someone in the chat who actually knows the they name like of to all call four it stores. Games of ABC. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Griff, if you're still uh, watching <laughs> in the chat, tell us where we can go and pick up our games and not have to wait for shipping. One of my first jobs out of college was working at games uh, at the game gallery, which was one of the games of whatever, uh, in the Embarcadero Center, which no longer exists. Mm. Um, and that was when I discovered the danger of payroll deduction. <laughs> Oh, I was like, yeah. wait, I can get this whole Warhammer army and not pay any real money? Yes, please. I, and then I, I wondered where my paycheck went. I had the same problem when I worked when I worked at various bookstores. Mm -hmm. My paycheck had difficulty making it out the door. It is it is a weird thing. So now what I'm gonna have us do, because I've talked a lot and I'm, you know, I'm out of practice. So I'm going to pass the deck around to the various characters. And what you're gonna do, actually I'll just deal a card to you. What you're gonna do is you're going to Read the back of the card. Out loud or to ourselves? First to yourself. And then you're going to read it out loud and do what it says on the card. So we'll start with you. Okay. This is introducing the characters that will be on our boat. So do it now? Yeah. Okay. Here, you can read. All I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, I may need to read Thomas's to him very quietly in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, this is the character Anne Nickerson. The deal I made with my mother was that she could send me to whatever blue stocking finishing school she wanted if I could spend the summer aboard the Isabel with my father. She agreed and chose Miss Brackett's school in New York City, which I still hate. I am enthusiastic, but sheltered. Put this card next to the cabin's card and speak Anne's truth. All right, so how does Anne feel about being on this ship? <laughs> I honestly thought that it would be a great escape from my mother and from all of her nitpicking and hovering and... Um, and then here I'm on this boat and I'm breathing free, but it's so far from everything I know that I've become to dread it. Hmm. Hmm. I like it. And now we'll slide that card over here by the cabin. So Anne is on the board. All right. I have uh, Lilas Taunas. Lilas Taunas? Whatever. You decide. Lilas. Lilas. It's your card. Lilas It's Towns. also my card. <laughs> oh. Are you also Lila? No, no, no. You'll know. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I have been called to this work to bring the teachings of Jesus to those who toil in this forbidding wilderness. And my husband, David, will build my church in Sandpoint on Pompoff Island among the uh, Alutic and the Russians and the fishermen. I am passionate but presumptuous. And we, we mentioned this, but I'll just mention this again. Uh, we're in the Alaskan Islands, so uh, the, the Alutic are the local Inuit uh, tribe. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't the, the 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 indigenous people. It, it's down in the Aleutian Islands area. Okay. And uh, did uh, how does Lilas feel being on this boat? Well, I don't much care for the moving around. It's it's uh, we prefer to have feet on good solid ground. But God calls us to to pass through fire and tribulation in order to. Give, advance his message. So she is uh, seasick constantly, but resolute. Don't mess up the cod. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have David Towners. My wife Lilas is a genius who positively burns with the light of the Lord, and it is my role in this life to assist her in her ministry. I myself am nothing, but Lilas has been guided by the hand of God, and I will in every way ease her path even if it takes us to the frightful backwaters of Alaska, I am clever, but demanding. 
And how does he feel being on this boat? It does not matter how I feel, for my <laughs> wife has been called, and I will do whatever is necessary to see that she brings the light of the Lord to all who need it. I like it. Them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you got? Uh, this is Portugal. <clears throat> <laughs> Portugal. <laughs> Portugal. Fun with flags. Okay. <laughs> all right. My name is Ernesto Bautista Macalang. And I am not Portuguese. <laughs> Stop calling me this. <laughs> but I am also not a man who catalogs his indignities. Id indignities. Ind yeah, that's, that's the accent is about something else. Right, anyway, anyway. Oh boy. You know the word, but accents are hard. <laughs> I have been deflicted with a Jensen's disease. <laughs> Damn it, it made it onto this boat too. I've been on the Isabel since she was christened, and she has been sadly neglected of late, and I think that this will be my last jaunt aboard the gold girl. I am experienced, but fragile. <laughs> Uh, put this card next to the bow card and speak Portugal's truth. All right. Where is Portugal from? <laughs> da, da, da. Portugal is... We're buffering at the moment. Oh, oh we are. Oh, no. Yep. I don't know what that means. And we're back. Internet is... And we're back. Huh? Internet got hinking. You know, we had some internet issues. If, if you're just joining us, you missed Thomas's accent. They, they, I'm not they sorry. didn't is the problem. <laughs> 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 Hmm. Uh, or do we know where Portugal's? Uh, does he does he volunteer that information? No, nope. no, nope. he does not. He's uh, okay with being called Portugal. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that they call him Portugal, not Portuguese or something. I mean, I, or the Portuguese. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I I I know people who who call my sister Alaska because that's where she's from. Okay. So you know. So what's his truth? Oh, uh, his truth is that. Uh, He's done with this. Apparently, we did cut off after the first line of the card, so we may. Oh, I'm so oh, sorry, wow. Thomas. You may want to read that again so people know why we're making oh, fun of Portugal's Portugal. accent. Also, the NDI shutting down probably is related to the whole uh, internet thing. Network. Mm -hmm. so, oh. That makes sense. My name is Ernesto Batista Mosk Macabalang. <laughs> Maca what? What the? Macabalang. Yeah, Macabalang. Uh, and I am not, so he must be Filipino, I'm guessing. Probably. And I am not Portuguese, but I am also not a man who catalogs his ig indignities. There we go. I've been on the, for those of you who missed it. Uh, <laughs> we had trouble with this word. I've been on the Isabel since she was christened, and she has been sadly neglected as of late. And I think this will be my last jaunt aboard the old girl. I am experienced, but fragile. <laughs> Ah, uh, Portugal's truth is that he is experienced but, tra but fragile and <laughs> no go. longer wants to be on this ship. Okay. All right, well, um, he's going to get his wish sooner than he wants. <laughs> I have Captain Nickerson. I am master of the Isabel and make my money when we are a happy crew and heavy with fish. On this journey, against my better judgment, I've brought my daughter Anne. She wanted to see the world, and this is my part of it. The fresh air will do her good, at least. <coughs> I am calm, but troubled. Uh, Nickerson's truth is that he did not want his daughter to come on this trip. She pretty much bowled her way into it, uh, and um, he is well aware of how dilapidated this boat is and is worried all right, the next round of characters. Ooh. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh my god. Uh, oh. just start us off, Gizli. Give me a second. <laughs> character's name is Gordon. The universal truth of human nature is that we are all craven, mendacious fools. So it is best not to form too strong an attachment in close quarters. I will keep my peace and drink my own whiskey. I am competent, but perpetually drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome line. I will keep my peace, but drink my own whiskey. <laughs> uh, put this card next to the bow. All right. So over here with Portugal. And Gordon's truth is he may be drunk. He drinks all day long. 
but he sees more than most. Uh, he hears it all. Mm -hmm. All right, what do you got? All right, I have Holmes. I'm a simpleton, but my heart is as sweet as candy, and I'm glad to work hard among friends. For those that laugh at my infirmity, let God judge them. I'm likable, but careless. Where does he go? He goes in the four deck. I think that's about deck. Yeah, I'm in the slide. There you go. It's a real small boat. It is a small <laughs> Oh, it's only going to get smaller. I know. Oh, uh, <laughs> close quarters. Uh, Holmes's truth is that from the moment that that captain's daughter came on board, he hadn't been able to look anywhere else. She lights up the world. Okay. The only two women on the boat are Lilas and Anne. So yeah, take Anne. <laughs> Lilas is scary. Yeah. <laughs> Lilas lights up the world in the burn it down <laughs> kind of way. That's oh, okay. the other the other character I play. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Kenneth. I have never been out of sight of land before, and it thrills me. Here I am, the son of a tar boiler on a grand schooner in Alaska. I am excitable, but unsophisticated. <laughs> He's going to go to the foredeck. <laughs> There's so much fish. Kenneth, I love him. His <laughs> truth is dead, dead, <laughs> yeah. dead. Uh, yeah, Ken Kenneth, uh, and, and it's, uh, that's not with a TH, that's two Fs. <laughs> Kenneth. Kenneth. Uh, Kenneth's uh, truth. Is he Welsh? I know he's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he spells his name. I, I was going to say, if he I was Welsh, a... there'd be too many there'd be more wise. I don't wise have a thing to write down quotes on, but that is fantastic. Oh. Um, I'll spend some paper. Uh, uh, Kenneth's truth is uh, that he uh, he's so excited that he really he really believes that he is here like doing a, a good thing and really having an experience and he does not realize how much he's just in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Slipknot, Kenneth, Slipknot. <laughs> what do you got? Lustin cough. Wow. What? That's a name. <laughs> wow. Lustin cough. Every morning I wake up at three baking bread. As much to mask the stench of bilge water and kerosene as to feed the crew and passengers. Okay. I hate cod. <laughs> but I love my job and I love men. <laughs> so what? <laughs> I am cheerful, but manip manipulative. Ooh. A little extra uh, bread in there for you. <laughs> Lusting cough's truth uh, to the bow uh, is he loves men um, a lot. And he's very happy, but hates cod. It's pretty much what the card just said. Okay. <laughs> he picked a good line of work, I guess. <laughs> I have Harris. I look, uh, this guy, the only guy in uniform. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Boy. <clears throat> I would be anywhere else if I had my druthers. But, like the cogs in a wheel, I require the money this trip will bring to realize my further ambitions. Laugh if you must. But I... Wish to be an actor. Oh god, I knew that. <laughs> there it is. So, yes. it's fish heads for me. Four months aboard this leaky tub, I am ambitious, but cynical. He goes Why to did the... you repeat yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Harris will go to the bow and... Ship's a bit front heavy. <laughs> oh, there, there's the four people in the cabins to balance uh, it out. Harris's truth is that uh, he has... Uh, he has already been told that he is a terrible actor. And that's why he came on this boat, was to get the money so that they he can pay people to not care if he's a terrible actor. He wants oh, to be the producer. Full so Florence he, Foster Jenkins yeah, hat. Yeah, he, he's, okay. he's, you know, if he runs the show, then he's going to be in it. That is... Uh, Ah, uh, thespians. <laughs> thespians. I don't know what you mean, sir. <laughs> I know exactly right. what you we mean. We have two more characters. Okay. And then, Alondra, you're going to start us off in the game proper. Oh, I was going to say, do I get the hell deck? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. We don't start with hell. Ah, oh, damn it. I always start with hell. <laughs> okay. The character's name is Brown. As a second mate, it falls to me to manage the business affairs of this accursed scow, and our business is fish. So I do the same work of all the others, and I count cod tongues and keep a tidy receipt. I am fair but harsh. Put this card next to the foredeck. 
So that is true. The way they got paid, their, their, their bounty was they everybody cuts the tongues out of the cod, and then you turn in the tongues, and that's how you get paid per huh. tongue. That's how they can tell how many fish you brought in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Brown's truth is that he actually loves this ship more than he ever lets on, and he knows that its time is getting towards the end, and he's kind of starting this grief process. Mm. And our last character. Our last character is uh, uh, Merculif. I'm first mate and an Al an Al Al Alutic. The Shumaguns are home to me and I know them well, but I left on a ship once and now I don't belong there any more than I belong in San Francisco. I am steady, but lonely. I should not have had this card. I was about to be like, <laughs> wow, you got called out. A little bit. <laughs> uh, they belong on the boat deck. Um, and what is, so he's native. He's native. To Alaska. So what is uh, Mercu Mercu Mer Merculeaf, what is his truth? His truth is that he's a person who's caught between worlds. He's... He sees how progress is coming and it's inevitable, can't stop it. But he, he grew up out in the islands and grew up with the old ways. So grew up knowing how to do all of the things that you're, you do out there for survival. It was just life. And now having lived in San Francisco and worked on this boat, doesn't really belong anywhere. Mm. So now the game proper is going to begin. Alondra has our first card from the deck. So what she's going to do, she's read the card. She's now going to decide which of these poor souls, whatever is on that card, is either done by or happens to, depending on what the card says. So go ahead and read that card out to us. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, better days. I sailed with old Captain Turner aboard the Porpoise when these fisheries were a novelty 20 years ago. We took 36,000 fish in two weeks. Of course, now I'm among a less grand class of people, weak and timid people who go pale at a little weather. The ship is sound, and I am not going to wet myself over some rough seas. And the action is speak your truth. All right, so who, who is that? Who said that? So now what you're going to do is you're going to put that card under the person to whom the action applies. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think... God, now I have to remember who right. everybody right. is. Right. Right. Like, that's the, the trigger. There's a lot of people. I feel like this might be... I, I mean, like this is Brown. Yeah, okay. Like, I feel like so he's, he's been around for a bit. Brown was the second mate. He now runs the business side of things. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, this was his... He remembers when this ship was When successful. it was new, when things had just started, all of that. And so what is Brown's truth here? Um, I mean, I think going with what we said before of, you know, he kind of knows that the ship is nearing its end. I think his continued truth of that is he doesn't think everyone's going to make it back. And he doesn't know if that's the people on the boat or the boat itself, but I, I think he senses that there is literally a sea change and this is not going to go well. Yeah, especially for the cod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, when that speak your truth thing, it might be that, you know, nothing needs to be added. And that's sure. totally okay. Um, it can also be you want to do, like, a scene with another character. You know, the, the speak your truth can be however you want to frame it. What do you got for the second card? My friend. You just never know with people. Hold on. You just never know with people. Oh, oh it can if it's back. <laughs> <laughs> I made a lifelong friend before the Isabel had cleared the feral lawns. And we remain inseparable despite our obvious differences. On a ship like this, it's good to have a friend. I try to be a good one. Which is Kenneth. I, <laughs> hope, Kenneth. I hope it's not Leston called. I was going to say, I made him a lot more of a gold oh, retreat. Oh, I, I mean, I, I was looking at that and that's either Kenneth or Holmes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I think Kenneth wants to be friends with David Towns. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh. All right. He's, he and David Towns hit it off. All right. I see it. Yeah. I see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baiting the hook. 
Sailors spend their time baiting hooks the size of their hands, 1,600 of them tucked to a line. They bait them with whatever fry they can scoop up, squid, capelin, innards, and it's a filthy business for filthy men. I could never love this life, but no one can deny the money's good. Uh, <laughs> this is Harris, and uh, his truth is that he doesn't want to admit it, but he's actually good at this. Mm. <laughs> like mm. he he in his mind, he has the hands of a of like a uh, of of a, a socialite there, but really they're calloused. They're good for baiting hooks, and he is one of the fastest workers at it. And he's kind of proud of it, but also because he's a pompous person. <laughs> but also, it's kind of depressing to you know be good at that which you hate. Who mood? <laughs> we need definitely need a cheat sheet of sorts. Yeah, for the yeah. characters that would be handy. Yeah. Red string board. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You know, I actually almost because. I almost put index cards out to like keep track of like oh, notes on mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Uh, Cause yeah, it's true. Like with so many characters, I mean, there'll be fewer characters soon. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chad. I hope you all are uh, starting to plot who you hate the most. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I, I I have a vote. <laughs> <laughs> I have several actually. <laughs> These are terrible people. Yes. Okay. Am I? Go, please. Uh, a dream. I dreamed I was lost in the fog in a dory, alone on the great ocean. I blew my tinny foghorn, but there was no reply. The sea was like glass, and it was endless. I awoke in a considerable sweat, and to be perfectly honest, I'm glad we are in heavy weather. I'm spooked by those little boats. Uh, dories are the lifeboats on board the ship. And there's no reason at all that he has those handy to show off. <laughs> and I have four of them. Mmm. Hate that? Uh huh. I was... It's just enough for me and my friend. <laughs> I actually think this is gonna go with Mr. Towns. Oh, oh. Okay. he's having prophetic dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to add anything for his truth there? Or? He's wondering in his mind. I mean, him being a um, as devote a religious person as his wife, he believes in uh, signs. So, mm -hmm. in his mind, is going, is this a sign from God? Mm. Sure. Is it a good sign or a bad sign? Well, a sign from God doesn't matter. That's true. Yeah. The burning bush was terrible, but it was. <laughs> so... Yeah. What do you got? Station keeping. We are keeping station in a howling gale. The winds in the Shimagans are from the southeast this time of year, invariably with rain and fog. The winds blow down off the islands with, a, with malice and can capsize a vessel in a moment. It must be vigilant and quick. Things could go from bad to worse in a moment. I mean, our, our first mate, I think. Sounds like Mercury, uh, Merculif. Merculif, yes. Um, being someone from, from these islands, he knows these winds, he knows the way that the sea works, and he's trying not to show it, but he's anxious because he can see that this is a bad storm that's coming in and he can hear the ominous creakings of the deck. Mm. Ghosts. I have heard that the Isabel was unmasted in a tempest back in 85 and her crew washed away and the ghost ship was towed to port and repaired. I feel in my bones that she intends to watch, wash us away too. There's death about her. I am going to give this to Anne. Oh, because, wow. Because what else do you do when you're kind of trying to buck the rules at a very pompous right? boarding school, but you sit up in the dark after curfew and tell ghost stories? Sure. And sometimes you get a little too scared by your own oh, stories. That is yes. outstanding. Oh, my gosh. Brilliant. Yes. Does she believe that story? I don't think she did at first. I think she thought she made it up from little pieces of things that her father and mother had told her that she had heard eavesdropping on the stairs when she wasn't supposed to late at night. And I think now that she's on the ship and she's experiencing the storms and the waves and everything, I think she's beginning to wonder if maybe she didn't make it up. Mm. Mm. Thomas, Ooh. what do you got? 
delicious. We are somewhere off a keratin point on Unger Island in this miserable gale, and the Isabel is taking on water. That's not at all what Portugal sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I was tasked with wrapping, wrapping our bow in sail for in wow well, hello. I was tasked with wrapping our bow in a sail from s to stem the flow. Mm. Kept trying to, I kept trying to say from stern to stout. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not at all written here at all. <laughs> but um, it feels like it should. Thomas stem, is trying to blow the boat up. No flow. <laughs> There's no dynamite on this boat <laughs> yet. And that worked until we stopped making headway. Now the pumps cannot keep pace, and this ship is doomed. So dun, Por dun, dun. Portugal is at the yeah, bow. Yeah, he knows that the. He, uh, he knows. knows it's doomed. He is. Going to keep bucketing water out. Is he keeping the doomed news to himself? Or is he like... Um, he No, he'd be calling for the captain. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. The cod business. <laughs> I think... Yeah, this, is, this sounds like Gordon. Cod tongues. You catch a fish, you cut out its tongue. That's as good as money. The master counts your tongues. You get $30 for every thousand codfish. Dress the cod you've caught, form a line. The header lops off the head. The splitter opens the fish. The salter, well, salts it and throws it in the hold. Work together. Keep your own tongues. <laughs> I emphasize the keep your own tongues part. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the ship's taking on water here. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Put your cotton, we are uh, going to pause yeah. <laughs> after Tiana because it's time to abandon ship. So we're going to have these last two cards. Oh, interesting. Actually, I'll go ahead and give this to you, and then you can. No, you said we can also, in instead of just tell truth, we can also interact. Yeah, with yeah, you. Please, oh, please. I wasn't sure. Okay. A point of interest. I don't want to cause a panic, but the Isabel is a bad ship. Poorly cared for and overloaded, and we will be very lucky if she makes port. The deadlights are secured, and everyone will do their part, and yet I fear that Isabel will slip beneath us very soon. Double check something. Let's see if that's Holmes. The baker. Uh, it could Richard be the baker. captain. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. it could be the makes... captain after the conversation with Portugal. Actually, that makes a good point, so yes. And, you know, the captain's well aware there's too much fish on this ship. It's overloaded. And we're going down. All right, our last uh, semi-safe card. A liar. Oh. There's nothing worse among a small crew than the outrageous turpitude of the moral coward and teller of lies. Someone has been telling lies about me, very egregious ones too, and I know who it is, and they will answer smartly for their careless words. I know where that one's going. I was yeah. leading Holmes originally, but oh, no, really? as I was reading, I was like, no, this is Lila's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's funny, when you said that nobody likes a liar on board, I'm like, imagine a harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> Yeet. <laughs> uh, what, who, who's telling lies? 10 pun damage. Ah. Uh, Harris is out here telling lies. He spins them too well. Uh, okay. Look, I'm sure she's lovely. You can't. But... You can't trust someone who tells lies for a living. Mm. Ah. <laughs> of course, right. she hates thespians. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking so, hates them. Uh, your card is called Abandoned Ship. Yes, Abandoned Ship. Uh, the gale turns to storm, and the Isabel is sinking. Just like you said. Uh, Choose someone to lash themselves to the wheel to allow safe escape for the rest. Send them to the deep. Remove the four Isabel ship cards and spread out the four Dory cards. Divide the remaining survivors unevenly among the four Dories as they hastily abandon ship. So, we got some bits. So, NGC457, Duke Fleeg, and uh, Griff. Games of Griff. Yeah, if you guys are all in there, if you want to elect who gets lashed to the wheel to uh, hold steady while everyone else escapes, 
Hop yeah. in the chat now and let us know. Otherwise, I'm gonna pick someone. Is it and is it consensual? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's a, I, I, it was interesting because I almost just dropped in the chat. I was like, "Hey guys, you want to die first? No spoilers." <laughs> um, uh, but I realized I was like. Like logically, if I'm just picking, I will say I will, I'm going to pick a crew member because sure. yeah. that they would actually have the know-how to be able to do that. That said, <laughs> I will defer to the chat if they want me to just nerf everyone's least favorite character. Holmes is like, I'll do it. No, that's oh. Kenneth. Kenneth would volunteer. Kenneth so and I think it's very yeah, eager. voluntarily. But also, we could just all get <laughs> convincing. I mean, th there is also the the trope of the captain goes down with his ship. So, yeah. just to explain what this is, the only reason they lash you to the wheel is to keep the ship going one direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. it's so you can hold steady in the storm. Fleek votes Lelis. I don't see Lelis doing that consensually. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, that is. And just four five seven says it thinks Portugal. Mm. Uh, what did Portugal ever do to you? All right, so we got Lilith in Portugal. Yeah. All right. Griffin, are you in the Are you in the chat? If Griff is in the chat, he's the tiebreaker. Otherwise, we'll be the tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's got to be dice somewhere in this room if we need to just roll for it. I can go grab mine. That's true. <laughs> Let's give give chat a minute. Um, I, like, uh, I think it narrows it down. Yeah, yeah. it does. Um, I gotta go as my game's about to start. Can I get my Hootical vote to Duke Fleeg? If not, then I vote for Thomas because accents. <laughs> you can't kill a PC. You only kill. Oh, no, no. I, I, I think that, that I, 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 I think that was giving the, yeah. giving the vote to Thomas. Give the vote to Thomas. Just like, to spare you, Portugal. <laughs> I was like, Thomas, I think that that means you get to take the tiebreaker since Duke Fleeg has already voted. Well, I am so. going to say that uh, I'm going to go with Duke Fleeg, and <gasps> Lilas is. We're gonna gang up All on right. Lilas cool. unceremoniously oh, oh, as a crucifix screaming. tied to oh. the steering wheel. Yeah. <laughs> and very likely flinging her body from side to side. This is not staying on a single course. Actually, <laughs> or would she accept her fate? Yeah, because this is the calling. Yeah. yeah. This is, That's this, why this, God this, put this her on this boat. This is not bringing the, the, the gospel to, to the poor savages. Her story of will be yeah. told, though, by she, David as yeah, he carries oh, the legacy oh, of her martyrdom. She, like, grabs David and she's like, you must tell. I will tell one of my sacrifices. I will tell them of how you took the ship forward so that we could go on and in the she, light of the Lord. And then she just starts singing Nearer My God to yes. me. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, Channel yeah. says, because if she has faith, God will save her. So, yeah. well, so many options. That's cool. That works. She's like, great. I will be baptized anew. <laughs> God, this just became a, <laughs> a horror game for real now. Cool, so, cool, cool, cool. We've lost Lilas. David is, I'm sure, broken, but we'll move forward. So now he's got a good friend. <laughs> uh, let's. We're gonna. We're gonna keep the sort of board gamey feel to this. One at a time. Put somebody in one of these four boats. Okay. And again, uneven. There could be one person in one, mm -hmm. five in one. Don't worry. It happens to the best of us. Uh, it's because you're so tall. All right. So Portugal is in the first boat. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can't reach. Uh, uh, McKillop in three. Okay. Mm. okay. Um, I would like to put Anne in four. Okay. Um, I'm going to say four was closest to the wheel. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. That's where David went. Okay. Somebody pulled David into the Does boat. David... Do we oh, have wait, to put him is in there? David sad? <laughs> no, no. I mean, martyrdom is <laughs> no. Martyr, martyrdom is like the ultimate. It's true. The yeah, ultimate. Right. Also, he could also just be completely in shock and then goes, okay, yeah, this yeah. is my, I'm on. You can't or did he ever even die. really care? You know, who on this boat can actually row the dang thing? That's None the, of them. No one yet. Uh, Back to well, story, I am yeah. going to add to the tragedy and have the captain separated from his daughter. Aha. Uh -huh. <sighs> yep. Uh, let's get Harris in the three. I told you about the play I wrote. <laughs> uh, many times. <clears throat> I'm going to put Kenneth into four. Okay. He's got to go with his friend. He's got to go with his friend. He has to go with his friend. He's the one who dragged David yes. into the boat. Like Absolutely. David was in shock. Just God, like, I, no, you can't go down. God, Anne's doomed. <laughs> you have to tell the story. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, you got to go. You got to tell them all about it, man. This is your calling. <laughs> she would want you to go. Yeah. Come on, let's Anne, go. Anne cannot stop staring at her father who's in the boat over, <laughs> just try to keep an eye on him. Mm-hmm. Um... 
So we got Brown, Gordon, Lestinkoff, and Holmes. He's the baker. Lestinkoff is in the boat without women. That's a- okay. That <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty easy to do. There's only one. Yeah, Lestinkoff's like not that one. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna put Lestinkoff in with the captain. All mm-hmm. right. All right. Thomas, we got Gordon, Brown, and Holmes. Oh, Holmes is seeing an opportunity to get on. Oh, yeah, there <laughs> we go. Uh, he's no dummy. Yeah, yep. follow the guy who knows how to survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Brown is the second mate, right? Yeah. He's going to go with the captain. Okay. So where is Gordon going? I'll have him on three. All right. So we've got two people on Dory 1, three people on Dory 2, Three people on Dory 3, three people in Dory 4. We go now to the in-boats deck, and we'll start off with Thomas. People are now, uh, if you want to give bits, people are going to start <laughs> dropping. I'm going to uh, put abandoned ship over there. Yeah, good. Yes. Just so that we know that we played it. All right. In case anyone was confused why they were in lifeboats now. <laughs> A waking dream. Soaked, salt-encrusted, and freezing. I am filled with anger. Bobbing helplessly around the North Pacific is bad enough, but I must share my torment with the worst person in the world. <laughs> An intolerable jackass. David, David hates Kenneth. <laughs> I'll bet I David daydream really about Kenneth. beating their foolish head in and then wake from my dreaming with a bloody balloon in my hand. You. Maybe um, Anne hates David. Speak your truth, <laughs> because Anne <laughs> hates oh, David. Oh, exactly. Oh, Wait, she kills him? Yes. yes. Oh, oh, my God. God. She just yeets him off the boat? Well, no, she gets yeah, with she a beats bowling him. pin or Yeah, something. she beats him with like a, she waits till Kenneth is asleep. <laughs> oh, my God. A Speaking bloody of... belaying. Oh, pin. my God. So she waits until <laughs> Kenneth is asleep. That's my and girl. He's <laughs> and he's shaven. And then he, and then she, when they wake up, she's like, mm-hmm. I just woke up and he was gone. Oh God! Now I'm terrified of Anne. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that I turned our sweet girl into a nightmare child. This is finishing my school. school. Goal. <laughs> as he, as he like slides over the side, he's like, I'm coming, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Good, reunited almost immediately. <laughs> the death roll. The vision is seared into my memory. The Isabel, heavy and low in a death roll. She was broaching to windward on her beam's end, and then the sails met the water, then rose again, heavy, counter rolled, and that was it for the Isabel. It was a magnificent, terrible thing to see. That is the captain mm-hmm. who is having to live with how happy he is that he didn't go down with the ship. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know, he he di- he didn't say boo when they when when the when Aunt, when uh, the the preacher woman stepped forward. Yeah. Well, if that's the way you want it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. He's a coward. Okay. He's a captain of a new ship. <laughs> That's adoring. <laughs> My Beckwith. Our fishing boats are Beckwith dories made of sugar pine and fir with oak rails, clinker built and 16 feet in length. They are easy for one person to handle, being very beamy and small. I like this boat and can hand, reef, and steer her with ease. I believe I shall make for Kodiak. Sounds like uh, a, that's okay. a bit of a haul. <laughs> okay, it does say, stay with the flotilla or depart and go to the deep. So, Ooh. you can, t- like, this, whoever th- you choose for this person can decide to keep the boat with the little fleet, or they can take off. Ah, okay. And, that, and everyone moves. on that boat, that will be the end of their story. We don't know what happens to them. I'm really thinking that's going to go with... The native. Ooh. And is he leaving? He is not leaving, but he knows his out. He knows the directions, and he knows where to go, and he knows his last ditch point. Mm -hmm. Is he not leaving to... Because he feels a need to save these other fools? No, or? no, because they chose their own path. He is staying because he wants to finish out this 
chapter. Mm, the last voyage of the Isabel. Mm. Yeah. Plus, he's waiting for a whale <laughs> to show up that he can ride. <laughs> All the Lilas. <laughs> a survivor. And here is a rat, spiky with block grease and evil to look upon, that somehow survived the calamity and made its way into my dory. I think we shall be friends. I do not need any more enemies. Uh, we're gonna be great friends. <laughs> <laughs> nope! <laughs> oh dear. Uh, that's gonna go with Holmes. Huh. Okay. Holmes is making friends. Holmes is yeah. is very much, what's his face from my, of Mice and Men? Lenny? Yeah. yeah. Lenny. Very much. Bunny. Feeding it, feeding it, feeding the, the rat little pieces of, of his hard tack and talking to him and in like the exhaustion of having rowing all the time. Hmm. Four months and three days. Four months and three days. That's how long we were supposed to be away from San Francisco. I have business there. Someone waiting for me with loving eyes. A baby will be waiting for me. Four months and three days would be very welcome right now, as the remorseless gray waves hint at eternity. Mm. Mm. Um, well, I was going to do something real screwed up with this one, but I don't think you can play two cards on the same character in the same round. I'd say that there's no problem with that. You can? Yeah, go to town. It's the captain. Stack it on. Oh! <laughs> Secret family! Yeah. Oh. Okay. I am never getting invited back to board game. That is outstanding. I just make everything terrible. That is outstanding. That's what this game is. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the whole point of this game. Uh, um... Maybe that's why he didn't want Anne to come along, too. No, because she's supposed to be in New York at boarding school. Uh -huh. and Further complications. Mom's in Massachusetts, another port town. And he's got that's, his other family on the West that's Coast. That's good stuff. Yikes. <laughs> Love it. Thomas, what do you got? The final tattoo. This has all been too much, and I am done. Exhausted, sodden, and cold, my heart is beating without its final tattoo. When I am gone... I hope I am treated with decency and gentleness. Speak your truth and go to the deep. Oh. So somebody just ends it. They just just step off the boat. Slide off the boat. I think uh, Kenneth is missing David so much. <gasps> oh! Oh! She's oh, gonna die by herself. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, she murdered a full-grown man. <laughs> she might even make it. Oh, Kenneth! Oh no! But he can't oh, stand it. Oh, that's beautiful and tragic. <laughs> No. <laughs> David. <laughs> he didn't need a mean to. He just was <laughs> looking for him in the water. Oh, wow. It just goes. Oh, yikes! Brutal. The abyss. I'm falling, like a shooting star now, but down through the depths, a weightless seraph, and I don't mind. Below me is the great Alaskan cod bank. We took one million fish this year alone, more even, but they still form a solid, undulating silver wall below me. The god part to let me pass on my journey to the abyss. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, man. So it's a fisherman. Yeah. Oh, man. I think it's Portugal. Okay. I think he's he's given up. They're not. We're not going to get through this, and so it was always going to be his last voyage. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, yeah. True. that's true. Wow. Still together. Through the fog, an apparition appears, and I quickly realize it is another boat from the Isabel. The feeling of seeing another dory is indescribable. We are not, but a ragged little flotilla. We cannot raft together, but we can spend a few moments and perhaps adjust our loads. We are still together, and it gives me hope. Speak your truth and move survivors between two boats. Ooh. Uh -huh. mm. I'm going to give this to Brown. Okay. Oh. All right. And this is like... Oops. He seems... Because he, he deep down knows that the captain got into that position of being in captain in charge more by who he knew than by his skill. Mm -hmm. Brown has more skill than the captain does, and he understands the benefit of getting everyone to closer together. Mm. Mm. So. 
So would you like to shift anybody between two boats? Let's bring Anne over. Oh, all right, we have an empty boat. So you can only do two boats. So do you want you want to bring her to this boat? No, I don't want her with her father. All right. <laughs> no, we can put her here with Holmes. Yeah. All right. And do you want to put Holmes in Dory Four? Do you want to? Is Dory Four done? Dory Four's done. All right. Okay. We're down to three boats. The stars guard me. In the half light of the Alaskan dog watch, all the stars in God's firmament are arrayed before me for glorious inspection. Regal is like a burning chip of topaz, and Terry is a fiery red. I am in great peril, but also in great company. The stars will watch over me, and I will survive. I feel it in my bones. This debt keeps coming for me. <laughs> God, that's just rude. <laughs> What are the most Alaskan terrible. things we can say? We give them all to Ray. <laughs> it is a Pacific cod of stars. <laughs> Apparently. I mean, that has to go with Merculef. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm guessing he survives, huh? Uh, it says speak your truth. Yeah, all right. So, I mean, he's surviving at least for now. Definitely. And, and, as, and as part of what he had noted before, he now with, with the sky uh, clearing a little bit, he can, he can see the stars and now he knows, okay, if I need to ditch out of here, Kodiak's that way. Okay. So, Alondra has the last <gasps> of the In Boats cards. And then we go to hell. <laughs> Not quite, so close. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us. <laughs> Discomfort. Mm. The smallest things cause the blood to boil with rage. A body shifts, and there is a grumbling, and then there's a noisy little kick, and then, despite my exhaustion and starvation, I am fully prepared to tear someone's throat out for their outrageous insolence. There is a moment's hesitation, and then I collapse. We will fight again. I'm going to give this to Harris. I think he's like he's he's so fixed on like maintaining this pretension and this pompousness, and now he can't even like even the thing that he was mad about being good at, he can't do because he's just stuck on this boat okay. with these two people who are just. Like, they're not useless, but in his mind, they yeah. are. They're these lower class. But you keep rattling on about stars. Yeah, taking up so much space. Um, and all, mm. that is all it is. He speaks his truth. He's He is picking fights and getting into them. And unfortunately, and... he speaks his truth externally, yes. not internally. He does not <laughs> use his inside voice. And Gordon and uh, Mercule just are like, dude. <laughs> Project to the far dory. You're lucky Anne's not on this boat. <laughs> 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 what happened to the people in the boat with her? We don't want to know. <laughs> you see the look at her. We've got a, a landfall ashore at last. The survivors make landfall and are perfectly safe. The end. Bye. Remove the four Dory cards and replace them with the two shore cards. Place the survivors on the beach or in the Barrara. Barra Barra. Barra. There you go. <laughs> As they might prefer. It is a, the Barra Barra is an, a, a native hut. Oh, okay. So there was a native hut on the beach. Well, Anne is, I think, clearly going to be in the yeah. Barra Barra. Uh, yeah. Uh, anybody have a strong feeling about where anybody else should go? Harris absolutely went to the Barra Barra. <laughs> yeah. He is 100% yeah. done being exposed to the elements. I, I heard this was a bar. <laughs> I'll say Brown's on the beach. Brown's on the beach? I think Merculif is on the beach as well, because mm. he he can make it a bar bar if he needs to. He'll leave it to those who are less capable. Merculif is now, like, really uh, disturbingly always looking at the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm occasionally glancing at the boat. Yeah. Holmes, uh, I think, would go with Anne. Yeah, mm -hmm. Anne. Okay. Listenkoff would be on the beach because Anne's in the Barra Barra. <laughs> he does not go where any of the women He are. likes men. He never he said anywhere he disliked women. Yeah, but now it's a bit. <laughs> is staying with his daughter. And Gordon, I think, on the beach. All right, there we go. Okay. I get the first hell card. This is where we learn that hell is other people. <laughs> uh, that was terrible dealing. We are getting down to it. The Egg Thief. Above our wretched shelter, vast screaming hordes of gulls, auks, murs, and puffins taunt us. They nest in the cliffs, and those nests contain eggs. I alone have the courage and stamina to make the attempt, and I scale half the cliff like a triumphant goat and eat my fill. There's no practical way down, though, and the fall is the end of it. 
and Portugal climbs the cliff. Wait, Portugal's, Portugal's already dead. Oh, Portugal's dead? I did the accent for nothing. <laughs> you did a good job with it, though. Yeah. Well done. Uh, then I think this was Merculiaf. Okay. Because okay. he would be the only the only other one who might know enough. Uh, maybe Holmes. But, I, you know, Holmes says a, a survivor there. So, yeah, Merculiaf <laughs> climbs the climbs the cliff and is so excited to have actual food to the extent that raw eggs are actual food. Uh, Bodybuilders seem to think so. And he loses his grip on the way down and... Spilling his blood on the native islands. Mm. That's okay. fitting. The dreadful calculus. Hunger beats like a drum and focuses the mind wonderfully. I have eaten my belt, salty and horrid, and was prepared to start on my shoes when a cautionary note sounded in my brain. To lose my shoes would invite the loss of my feet. It is a dreadful calculus. I am so very hungry. Mm. I'm going to give this to Gordon. Mm. And I actually wouldn't mind playing this against somebody. Yeah? What do you want? What's the scene? Um, Gordon is sitting there and rocking back and forth because he also is a drunkard and hasn't had anything to drink now in oh, some yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So he's getting more antsy and itchy and everything. And he's looking over at Brown and he's seeing Brown done up in his fine outfit and his fine, so that fine leather belt. <laughs> he goes, that, that could keep me for another day. And he starts reaching over to his belt to, and starts pulling it. And just not looking at his reaction, just trying to get it off of his pants. Get your hands off my belt. What are you doing? <laughs> are you going to keep it for yourself? Are you that greedy? Yes, I'm going to keep my pants up. Keep your pants. I want the belt. The belt keeps my pants. What are you doing, Gordon? I'm just get away. I I think you should take the belt. <laughs> you shut up. In the corner whittling, and he pulls his knife. Whoa, 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 whoa! And slashes up the belt and yanks it off of him and kind of huddles into a corner of the beach and just starts gnawing on it. I am going to talk to the captain. Okay. And Gordon will storm off to the Barra Barra. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, Brownwell? Oh, not Brownwell. Sorry. Yeah, Brownwell. <laughs> Grand near, <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, a hell card. An icy embrace. I am awoken by my own desperate shivering. It is extremely cold because my partner in awful contorted sleep has died in the night. Ooh. They have died in my arms as we huddled for warmth. Send someone to the deep and speak your truth. Oh no. <laughs> so so the, the card is going to the person who is who's, holding the dead person. And somebody else oh. is going to the deep. Yes. I'm going to give this to Captain Nickerson as he's holding his daughter. Oh, oh yes. wow. Yes. Yes. She's too small and too thin from, from, from her blue stocking education, and she didn't have... I tried to keep her warm, tried to get her through one more night, but didn't have enough. Oh, yeah. I've lost all the women in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Except my second family. <laughs> <laughs> Lost I'm most only of a the <laughs> I've lost that all. Actually, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he wakes up and he's like, okay. I can work with this. I can yes. work with this. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. We are horrible people. Yeah. I don't know if y'all realize this, but we are horrible We've people. We've only made these people worse. <laughs> and yet our storytelling acumen is phenomenal. There you go. And now I give you something even worse. Yes. Oh! Let's hear it. Wait, hold on. We have... Gordon left. We have Lestenkopf left. We have Brown, Harris, the Captain, and Holmes left. So we are dwindling. Rapidly. Preaching. I... Oh. <laughs> oh. Someone is preaching now on the topic of Paul and his shipwreck. 
and it is loathsome to my ears. I cannot bear it. I curse the sound of it, curse God and all gods. I shake my sore-covered fists at a sky that never darkens. I will die with venom on my broken lips, or I will silence that preacher forever. Speak your truth, and send someone to the deep, or go yourself. Mm. Ooh. I could see this being Harris. It could be the, the it would be weird if it was Leston cop, but I could sort of see it. It's just like shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Well, my my thought um, my my first thought was who has picked up the mantle of preaching? Oh, because yeah. Cause oh, we because yeah. all of our our <laughs> hyper religious folks and obviously their best friend all drowned. <laughs> <laughs> all went down to the ships. Um, I. Gordon's gone crazy. Maybe he's Gordon's... gone religious crazy. Now yeah, that he had the belt. You know, mm, that's true. I think I think Gordon is the one who has gone off his rocker. I think he's gone full religious fervor. The funny thing is, he's not even preaching. He's just saying the Lord's prayer over and like that's all he's, he knows. He's, well, he's reciting the passage yeah. about the shipwreck yeah, right? and like yeah. probably a bad oh, job perfect. of it. Yeah. So he's just like it's like the very Sunday school like right. like strip down version yeah. where it's like and then they were saved and blah blah you know and just like muttering to himself. And I think Holmes comes out ah! in the night shut and up, just. Shut up. Oh, outstanding! Yes. The nicest man. He's <laughs> he he has reached his breaking point. He's seen oh. he's seen so many people. Everyone who was in his boat is gone. Anne's gone. Like he's he's not here for it. Mm. Yeah. Leston cough <clears throat> on the beach after witnessing a man <laughs> eating a belt, stealing another man's belt, <laughs> and eating that. <laughs> I did it. It was me. I have eaten all our food. Every last shred and morsel. It was very delicious. Everyone is in such a stupor that no blame can be assigned. And I am glad of that. I will rot in hell for this. And yet, my belly is full for the moment. I will speak my truth. Lested cop ate all the food. He is the one well, he he's, yeah, he's the only one who had it. He, he knows, you know. Um, so this will go under Lested cop. Yeah. So his truth. Um, he really wanted that belt. He doesn't like all men. <laughs> there are definitely men he does not like. Um, Gordon was one of them. <laughs> So this was a celebration? Yes. Okay. So, not, not sad when his he's sad. belly is full. Friends, Content for the moment. I can't think of anything more appropriate than the salvation card going to Tiana. <laughs> okay. But let's see what happens before, before we get that. there. Butter clams. <laughs> Someone who knows better told me not to eat the butter clams. <laughs> that I dug up said they were poison but I was too hungry to listen I ate them all up raw and now I wear them like a filthy apron coughing up blood Ooh. and I, I can't talk right mm -hmm. and my vision is fading I can't remember my name Oh, why I am here? Is this finally my death scene? Oh. <laughs> and Harris dies. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a good night, sweet prince. Did you add scene to the card? <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> wow. Exeunt omnes. Mm. Okay, so we have four people left. Yeah. Okay. Dry throats. It is May in the Schumigans. And water should be the least of our concerns, but nature has been perverse, and it refuses to rain. I am so very thirsty and so very weak. I wrung some muddy silt out of the tuft of a lime grass, but the effort exhausted me, and it was undrinkable. I am going to die here. Eventually. Captain Nickerson, because he just whines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thirsty. <laughs> we all are. I miss my family, both of which ones. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one's left. left. One of them's alive. Salvation. The schooner Albatross appears, and the beach is soon swarming with her cod dories. Survivors. Holmes is the one awake when they, when it, when they land. 
keeping watch over the others. Shadow of the big dumb man he was, mm -hmm. now just a skeleton watching over everyone else as they sleep. But he sees the, the dories pulling up. He has to clear his throat a few times before he can call mm -hmm. out. There's no water, but he's able to get a ragged cry out to the three other survivors, waking them and pulling them from their, their shuddering sleep. And the truth on this is we survived, but at what cost? Mm -hmm. Well, and that is sort of the epilogue here is what does salvation mean for each of these people? Like, I think Lestenkopf is like, he's like, I'm fine. <laughs> he's going to get to San Francisco. He's yeah. okay. Yeah, there you go. And, you know, Brown is just all business. Mm -hmm. He's he's thinking about the insurance, you know. Uh, Captain, know. Captain Nickerson is a shell of a man at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, yeah. And, and same with Holmes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's our story. Okay. It, uh, so one of the things that I really like about this is that we could have the exact same deck and have an entirely different story, mm -hmm. you know, because of the choices you make and that sort of thing. And um, I really like that, um, that kind of writer's room idea of just like, you know, the deciding who's going to have what happened to them is really an interesting uh, uh, thing. And the card stuff works pretty well. In the beginning, it was too many characters mm -hmm. to like, keep track of. That was yeah. The we, we needed there. to have like scratch paper to keep track of who was yeah, like what, a cheat what sheet or something. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. But I still think it pars down pretty quickly. And and yeah, it does. And it's well, <laughs> and it's you know, it was kind of nice because we definitely fixated on a few really obvious, easy to remember characters to start with, and then as those were eliminated, we're like, oh, okay, so what's going on with the other characters, and what does. Mm -hmm. Right, now we'll you add know. some layers to the, yeah. to the guys who are in the background to, to start with. Yeah. Um, what'd you think, Baroness? I thought it was a lot of fun. I enjoy um, g games like this where you're being creative about a backstory, creative about, um, like, choose-your-own-adventure style. So this was a blast. Yeah, it's really neat. The, um, so the other one, there are two decks in the game. The other one is Dead House, and that it takes place in a small Kansas town in 18 something 1880 something um as a blizzard comes in mm. ah. and the titular dead house is a real thing it was the house they put all the dead bodies in when the ground was too hard to bury them yeah you stack them through the window and so in that game there's actually a dead house card and when you send pe when when people die you put them in the house and they they go there <laughs> Yikes. Um, it is a little bit more there's a slight more occult tinge to that one, possibly, depending mm -hmm. on, on how you do it. This is very much just survival horror, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, it's uh, only 8.30. Let's play the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We I have know. a couple people who have uh, no, uh, know, things to do. Yes, but of course. Uh, th thanks so much for playing. Again, Desperation is available now in game stores everywhere uh, or at Bully Pulpit's website. Uh, they are planning on making more decks for it. I know that uh, uh, they're going to put out other stories uh, that use this. And honestly, once you've played it a time or two, you could make your own. I was just thinking that, mm -hmm. that, that I could think of a couple ways to make a story out of this. Yeah. Okay. I think there's a really interesting, like, um, sci-fi story to be told mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. a ship that is, you know, like... A space arc with people waking up and mm -hmm. you know things going wrong yes. or something. Yeah, like yes, yes, we played that. It was Cthulhu in space. Oh, well, <laughs> all right, all right. well that, I see. I would. I would not. I actually think this game is better when you don't have when you don't have yeah. fantastical elements. When it's just yeah. hell is other people. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't kidding about that. <laughs> Although, how fascinating would it be now that I've said that? I just thought of like this exact scenario, but with fantasy characters. Mm -hmm. So you'd have like the D and D tropes, but they're facing a real life kind of thing. This and how a, do they deal with it? That was just rhyme of the frost maiden. The thing that nearly <laughs> killed us more than the monsters was the travel checks. <laughs> and the yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, 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 <laughs> so I, I, I mean, there are all sorts of really interesting ways that you could go with this kind of construct. Um, I'd probably want, and 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 interestingly, I was trying. There's not even like there's a slight arc through mm -hmm. the decks, but inside the deck, everything's random. Yeah. So it's not like the numbers are in order, and so mm -hmm. like these things can happen. Um, 
I was also thinking of there's a board game uh, called Robinson Crusoe, and it does a thing yeah. where you have a little deck of cards, and you know you you go to this place and you search, and it's like there's an annoying monkey here. Shuffle this card into your deck, and so at some point that monkey's going to do something to you, but you don't know what. You know, and, and that might be kind of fun to work, because, like, okay. you know, there was one in there, like, I uh, I got bit by something, and it's like, shuffle it into your deck, and, oh, I'm dead, you know? Oh, <laughs> the bite, met the, the poison metastasized. But that could be kind of a, a way to shake things up, too, is to, like, have cards that you add to the deck that wait and happen or something okay. like that. Yeah, because one of the things that I was half expecting to happen with this game was that things would happen to the characters based on cards that they had on them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I was waiting for more... I mean, obviously, we gave them consequences based on the story, but I was expecting more consequences from the cards based on what on the cards that were stacked. Mm, interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, well, hey, tell us what you thought in the chat. We'd love Please. to hear what you thought of this, and um, if you if you could have done better than Four Survivors. Four Survivors uh, is pretty good. Four Survivors isn't bad. I there mean, were definitely people we didn't have to kill. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we could, you could have kill have them to, or not. But, yeah. Kill them. Yeah, there were options. Kill them. Kill them all. That is the lesson. <laughs> kill them all is the only correct answer. Uh, so we have, uh, that's going to do it for Quests and Chaos, uh, for uh, this special desperation thing. Don't forget, we still have awesome stuff going on here. Uh, we've got an arena coming up soon that's, I got to hear, I got to hear the secret plans that are coming up for this. Pretty exciting. Secret. Uh, we've got the redacted reports coming out on Wednesday. Uh, do we have any? And tomorrow. Tomorrow. We tomorrow. Have keys from the Golden Vault again. Oh, yeah. Like I hear Lady Benavere. This, yeah. this is our toilet game, right? Yep. Not anymore, because if you keep doing it, I will destroy them because I hate it. Thanks. Yes. 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 <laughs> All the toilet paper's explosive runes. <laughs> Is tomorrow the final episode in this heist? No, tomorrow no. is the first episode of a new heist, although oh. I might have to be shaking up the structure of the two-week pattern. We'll have to look at that and see. But yeah, Does it get longer? Uh, well, <laughs> more in depth. this particular one has a lot of things to potentially explore, and it really just kind of depends on how the first session goes and how they approach it. But it'll be really fun. Uh, we're continuing to rotate our heist crew, so there will be two characters that you've seen before and two that you have not. So tell your friends to tune in, uh, and that'll be happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you can see the Baroness. Baroness now is an overnight DJ on KSJO. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, tune in. She has the, the 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. stretch. She's taking your calls. She, 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 she uses the, the handle DJ Chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely not all run by a computer. Definitely not. Your, your music channel from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. is definitely not run by a computer. And, and don't call in because I will not answer. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, AI call in radio show. <laughs> Oh, that would be terrifying. Yeah. Really oh, sorry, Dave. Yeah. Oh, this I'm not allowed to play that. <laughs> you are not allowed to rickroll people at 3.30 a.m. So I yeah, went to college in the middle of nowhere, Vermont, and there was a radio station in this town that was quite literally like, you know, a guy would go in and like turn it on and that's it. And he was there and he would like uh uh he would be there like and he'd be like well had some trouble getting in today but we're starting a little late but let's play <laughs> some music and, and he was just this, like <laughs> he was not a uh not a not a characterful G uh, a dj but he was uh the dj they had i guess you know we had a uh, our local radio station in the small town right after high school was a polka station Nice. <laughs> yes. Um, like all the time. All yeah, it was a, all yeah, it was a polka station. Wow. Yeah. That's Arbitron rated number one in the. Uh... <laughs> That's like that one stretch of the five when you're headed from NorCal to SoCal, where all you get is mariachi music, and no matter what time of day or night, it's all just mariachi. I'm worried about the Coach. time when I turn on a station and it's just a number station. It's just oh yeah, like five. Oh yeah. Thirteen. Oh, you've, you, five you, you've, you've uh, stumbled into Welcome to Night Vale. I've not. Okay. Uh, or that... World War Two. Or depending. Yeah, yeah. That, yes. uh, Welcome to Night Vale was actually the first time that I ever heard of the number station. Yeah. I tried to write a TTRPG based around the concept of a number station a long Ooh. time ago. I still have the notes somewhere. I did not complete it, but it was for a game jam several years oh, ago. So I have a lot of notes okay. for a TTRPG based on a number station. You know, it's funny you said that. You just made me remember. Morningstar did an early game uh, of his that was a LARP. 
Oh yeah. Technically, but it was it had a deck of cards, and it, it, it worked kind of like this, where you'd like draw the card, and it, and and the idea was that you were all scientists who'd been uh, uh, rescued in mm. World War II, and you were doing experiments for the U.S. And the cards were like prompts to like lead you through the story, um, but it was a LARP, and it, and mm. it's, I think it's. Is it the, I've done a couple. It's one of the few LARPs I've ever done. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, cool. But Believe I, it or not, I've never LARPed. Yeah, well, I have not LARPed often, but um, the challenge with LARPs is that the number one resource is GM attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're not the sort of person who's like, hey, GM, yeah. you know, you're not, yeah. you, you, it, it, it might not be the best experience. It's really hard. When there's 30 people yeah. Yeah. trying to get the attention of one person who's yeah. doing something else, like planning a combat. And then right. there, everyone is sitting around for hours oh, overnight. The... I, I shot a documentary once. <laughs> I was going to say, this sounds like a shooting experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shot a documentary Over... about a LARP? Yeah. Well, wow. a couple days on it, yeah. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. The one LARP I worked with... I played in it was they it, it was right you couldn't just have one person so they had a team of three that's the better idea is to have mm -hmm. several GMs but the problem there becomes coordination GM left it doesn't know what GM right is doing yeah you know and... yeah it, it but it was I... like a lot of of um, interactive theater between each other it's like okay we gotta do this thing we need to go find a GM dun, 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 dun. and it's like you take 10 yeah. minutes to find somebody I I was in one dun, of the arms I did we did we were doing the interactive theater with each other and the guy goes this doesn't matter at all. <laughs> and I was like, are, like it kind of in the in the in the existential sense. I don't <laughs> <laughs> you wore the right shirt for that comment. <laughs> but like, but like, he just was like, you know, he just sort of negated that. He's like, you know, I mean, no one's gonna see this. This doesn't matter. It was like, so <laughs> only what? things only Near happen if me. the GM sees it. That's the weird. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's why I don't like art so much. But uh, you were gonna. Oh no no no! I'm I'm just I'm, <laughs> ide I'm just no I'm just ideating on on LARPs because I um being from my playwriting background I know a lot of playwrights who have also worked on crafting LARPs and helping create um, much larger scale things because you know through crafting the stories of like you have essentially DM NPCs right you have NPC player characters played by the actors with set storylines and quests and things. Um, also, if uh, because this was a short stream, if you need something to do for the rest of your night, you can go watch Jenny Nicholson's video about Evermore Park. Yes, which is an oh, it. it's like four hours long, nearly. Um, it, she basically made an entire documentary about this. But there's some really fascinating stuff in that about kind of the pitfalls of when you're trying to have. I mean, that's a little bit. It's not a true LARP. It's more music work, mm -hmm. but it's the pitfalls of how you do that when you have these kinds of character interactions that are supposed to be able to happen, but you lose track of mm -hmm. that over okay. It's some really so, interesting uh, stuff. My about brother the ran a game it. like that where I was a plant. Yes. And so um, it was a murder mystery. They didn't know that, but mm. I was the victim. Ooh. Yes. And so at a certain point, one of them was, ha like, in their character sheet, they knew they were going to kill me. Right. But I was off screen. Mm -hmm. So, like, I had an office, and he comes to me first and kills me. And then, some, you know, time, and then somebody's like, hey, has anybody seen Mr. Harris? And then they come and they find me and I'm lying there dead, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, Back and I get a nap. <laughs> and, you know, that was kind of a LARP. But then the whole thing was just trying to figure out who, uh, uh, who done it. Um, but uh, uh, it was also the time pressure was from uh, almost everybody in the, in the room were English uh, soldiers and their families as India was falling, oh. and and, the, and one Indian servant, <clears throat> which now if we if we did the game, we would probably not yeah. have a player playing that you know that character. But um, and of course you know also the servant was the killer, so you know that was uh, it's a little problematic <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in retrospect. Yeah. But um, it does fall into the into that the trope of the butler did it. But yeah, you know. well, and yeah, and native revenge, and yeah. there was a couple tropes, but it was not great. Uh, but you know it was the nineties. Yeah. We didn't know better. Uh, so 
I think I did. I plug everything I'm supposed to plug. We hit all of the schedule. Yeah. Tomorrow is keys. Wednesday will be redacted reports. Uh, the arena is going to be on a Saturday. It is going to be Saturday the fifteenth in a daytime slot. Ooh, and yeah. hopefully by tomorrow we will have afternoon the delight. Theme, uh, we'll have the theme info. So if you are a patron. You can keep an eye on the Discord. And if you want to participate by submitting a character for the arena, you can become a patron in our Patreon, and we will let you submit characters. Look at that. I might even not veto them when I do my really <laughs> cranky who didn't read the rules thing. I've never vetoed a character except once when I took a character out because that uh, person was playing in the game, and so we removed their, yeah, the one they submitted. And because we love our patrons, yes. we're going to end the stream with a patron Wait, we love role. Our patrons? Yes, with a patron roll. Not it's, you, Seth. It's kind of like a sushi roll, but it it's is a callback. <laughs> anyway, 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 that's how we're going to end this. All right. Yeah, okay. Patron roll. <laughs> Goodbye, internet friends. With a halftime video. Is that like a donut? <laughs> I'd love a patron roll right now. <laughs>